guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103, and today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. And to be honest, I've been doing YouTube now for about two years, and this has been the quietest day in Barcelona I have ever experienced. There's almost not enough news to make a video, but to be honest, I was sitting at home, I had the day off, I was bored, I'm like, you know what, let's make a video, let's be productive, and you know, just let the fans know what's going on in Barcelona. Of course, if it up that Lewandowski and his plan B option, of course, being PSG but Barcelona very very sure and have promised Lewandowski that they will sign him this summer. Bernardo Silva of course Xavi wants him to come in if we do sell Frankie de Jong. He gives the midfield three of Pedri, Bernardo Silva and Busquets in the holding. Defensive reinforcement apparently we're leading the race for Koulibaly that's coming in from Italy and Chelsea will be meeting with Aspen Quetta and Alonso this week to decide their futures and finally big update on the exit of Milan Pianche this summer as he could be going on loan to France in Marseille. But before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 300 lessons video be very much appreciated and also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours now the first player that we have been linked with is of course the number one priority signing for Barcelona this summer Robert Lewandowski now first coming in from RNC Sport in France they've come out saying that Robert Lewandowski's name was mentioned in the meeting between his agent and PSG's Luis Campos but nothing concrete at the moment, Leo wants to join Barcelona and has agreed a three-year contract, and Bayern Munich have still yet to respond to Barcelona's first offer they made for him about like what a month ago now that 32 million euro plus 5 million euros in variable offer is still on the table no response from Bayern Munich quite yet but again PSG are interested in Lewandowski of course if his move to Barcelona fails this summer and Sport 1 in Germany have come out saying that Juan Laporta and Matteo Aleman have no doubts that they will be able to sign Lewandowski this summer and Barcelona has already assured Fini Zahavi in March that they will be able to act economically should Bayern Munich agree to his exit so again the board of Barcelona have promised Lewandowski and his agent they will do everything they can to sign him. So pretty much just saying, look, if Bayern Munich accept the fact that he will leave the club this summer and accept our bid, we'll make a bid that's fair enough and hopefully in the end they will accept it and then he'll become a Barcelona player. So again, everyone has plan B's. Barcelona have a plan B as well, which is uh, uh, Gabriel Jesus at the moment. Lewis has a plan B as well, which is PSG. Very, very no more football. But at the moment, all the stars are aligned that Lewandowski will be a Barcelona player this summer. The question now is when will it happen? Before pre season or after preseason. Now along with the attack another priority for Barcelona this summer will be to reinforce the defense. Firstly in the full back positions on the right hand side the priority is Aspen Aquetta and on the left hand side the priority is Marcus Alonso of course both players from Spain and play for Chelsea. Now Sport have come out saying that Marcus Alonso and Cesar Aspen Aquetta will meet with Chelsea this week to resolve their futures. Both of them want to join Barcelona but there is more optimism about Alonso's arrival although Aspen Aquetta signed signing is not ruled out. So I think a few weeks ago I told you guys Aspenquad is more realistic, he's the more you know better option and now they've switched roles. Alonso is more optimistic now because apparently Chelsea do want to keep Aspenquad and may not let him to leave the club this summer. Again, out of the two, no doubt Xavi prefers Aspenquad. Apparently he's supposed to be the cornerstone of the new project alongside Lewandowski, which for me makes no sense. I feel like Aspenquad would be replacing Danny Alves' leadership and quality in the dressing room because of course Danny Alves is set to leave. We'll talk about him at the end of the video and with Des staying because Xavi has chosen Des over Danny Alves and Aspilicueta will be replacing Danny Alves on the right hand side. But of course, if Aspilicueta does not arrive, it will increase the chance of Danny Alves staying at the club. But at the moment on the right hand side, the plan is clear. Danny Alves leaves for free, Des stays, and Aspilicueta is signed. On the left hand side, of course, Marcus Alonso is the only target with Zinchenko and Javi Galan as the backup but there has been a new name over the past 24 hours who could come in as a new right back if the deal for Aspilicueta fails and that is the Argentina right back Molina. Tutu Sport from Italy have come out saying that Barcelona have joined the race to sign Molina. They're interested but the problem is of course that Udinese want around 30 million euros and this makes it complicated for Barcelona and many clubs like Juventus and Atletico Madrid are interested in the player. Now I have seen Molina play a few times for Udinese and of course mainly for Argentina. Very good right back but again more so of a wing back. He goes up a lot. He For the Udinese they play in the back three and he plays at that right wing back so he's forward more than he's defending but overall very young up and coming a right back he will be a great player in the future no doubt about that 
but 30 million years of course is a hefty price for Barcelona to pay with them having other priorities like that new right winger Lewandowski and other options as well so we with Molina again early reports coming in from Italy to the sport are you know they usually get stuff early right sometimes, but sometimes they just go out there and just make some wild predictions that they want to, you know, link a player with another club and just chuck him in there and just hope his, you know, price increases. Maybe his age is trying to throw him in there as well. So we see Molina, again, still early reports, but no doubt the two priorities in the fullback position are Marcus Alonso and Aspilicueta. Now, along with the fullbacks, the club will also sign a new center back this summer alongside the already signed center back, Andreas Christensen, and currently the number one target and priority is Kalandu Kulabali and there are reports coming in from Italy from Alfredo Pidola saying that several clubs across Europe are interested in Kalandu Koulibaly but currently Barcelona are leading the race to sign him this summer. Now early reports of course we are still unsure whether or not he will renew his contract with Napoli or not but everything the media is saying that he will not at the moment still instead of the least duty he will be coming back very soon. I said it before and I'll say it again I think Koulibaly could be the signing of the summer for Barcelona. I think he is the perfect center back to come into that defense and make us a hundred times stronger. And I remember him coming out in the media, I think maybe a few months ago saying, look, if I do leave Napoli, it'll only be for a top club like Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United. Otherwise, I'd rather stay at Napoli. What we are hearing currently is that Chelsea, PSG, and now Barcelona are the three teams leading the race with Barcelona ahead of the pack. He's gonna cost around 30 to 40 million euros. I think it's worth every single penny. I understand he's 30 years old, but it's either Koulibaly or Kunde. Kunde is set at 60, and of course Koulibaly is set at 30, so you get a half price off for an already established top world class center back. Again, for a couple years, or you can double the price, get a young center back who's very experienced in the league as well. But of course, with Kunde, Chelsea are all in on him, and they're willing to pay the full amount that Sevilla wants. So that deal right now is unrealistic, and now Koulibaly is the target. I am dreaming about this signing every single day, man. I think he would be a world-class signing, but I feel like in the end, it will be too good to be true, but we'll wait and see. But again, reports coming in from Italy are saying that Barcelona currently are leading the race with Koulibaly's signature this summer. Now, a position for Barcelona this summer that isn't the priority at the moment, but it could be later on in the window is, of course, the midfield. And we have, again, been linked with Bernardo Silva. Now, this is coming in from the mirror in the UK via Mundo Portivo. And they've come out saying that Barcelona will be willing to pay up to 70 million euros for Bernardo Silva, while Man City value him at around 93 million euros. There is a difference between the valuations of both clubs and negotiations must happen in order to have that meeting point in the middle. Look, I think I think the price for Bernardo Silva will be fair. I think it will be around 80 to 85 million euros, which of course is the amount that Barcelona want to sell Frankie de Jong for. And again, of course, this deal will not happen unless we sell Frankie de Jong. That's why I'm not really too much into it. Once we sell Frankie de Jong, or if we do, then I'll be hyped for it. I'll say, look, we gotta go get him. But right now, we're still in the early stages. And again, Mundo Portivo came out saying it is a dream for Chari to have an interior duo of Pedri and Bernardo Silva. Pedri comply with exactly what the coach wants, but not the other interiors in the squad. Bernardo fits that perfectly, and Nico and Gabi are very young and still need to be worked on, which of course is understandable. I think with Bernardo, again, the club are putting so much pressure on themselves to sign him if we sell Frankie de Jong. I feel like if we sell Frankie de Jong and we don't get Bernardo, the fan base is going to go off. I feel like a lot of fans will turn against Juan Laporta because, again, he's making false promises in the sense that he, you know, over-exaggerates a lot in the media. And we are hearing that Xavi will only sell Frankie de Jong if we bring in an equal or an upgrade player in the squad as well. And again, 85 million euros for Bernardo is a fair price in my opinion. And of course, we have a good relationship with Man City. We could pay that deal in installments again for Ferran Torres we're paying what 55 million euros over the next four summers we still haven't paid the first installment yet it will be due I think at the end of this summer we could do the same with Bernardo we say look you want 90 we want 70 let's meet in the middle at 85 and we'll pay that in installments over the next three or four summers I think that can break the deal over the line because of course if we're still in that one to three rule in the sense that we don't get that 500 million euros for the economic levers and we do sell for Guy Young for 100 million euros let's say or 80 we could always spend 30 on Bernardo with that one three rule for the FFP in La Liga and that if that's the case we could only do the deal in installments so a lot of complications again it all starts with the sale of Frankie de Jong we'll wait and see but if we do sell Frankie de Jong the club and more specifically Xavi want Bernardo Silva to replace him let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours firstly a player on a loan who will be coming back in around 20 days time and wants to do preseason with the first team 
is Maryland Pjanic. But Tutu Sport have come out saying that Marseille are interested in signing Pjanic as a replacement for Kamara, who has joined Aston Villa on a free transfer. Marseille's president and Matteo Aleman have a great relationship. And of course, we did see that last summer with the sale of Conrad de la Fuente. We already know for a fact. I think Aleman and the president worked together in Valencia, or maybe Aleman was working with him in Marseille before. I think this deal could happen. Of course, Pjanic has played in France before. He played for Mets. I believe he grew. I think he came through the Mets Academy and then joined Lyon. So, of course, he's very well known in the French League. I think he would be open to that move as well. But I don't know why, but Pjanic wants to do preseason first with Barcelona and then leave, which for me makes no sense. First of all, we want to get rid of him now to make that wage cap space and also get that squad number. And secondly, Go to your, you know, your loan team and train with them, get the team going there as well, get to, you know, no, you know, move in and all that crap. I mean, like, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Why do you want to do a preseason so badly with the first team? Again, you did that last summer. I think Coleman only paid, played you, what, the second half in the Juan Gamper and, like, a couple of minutes here and there, I guess, in our away games. Like, it makes no sense to me, but... We'll wait and see. Again, Pianic is a very stubborn person. He, of course, he does want to leave the club this summer if he's not going to be in the first team. That's, of course, completely understandable. But again, he does not want to give up a single penny of his Barcelona contract. Wherever he goes, he wants his 300,000 euros a week to be matched. Whether it's, you know, half Marseille, half Barcelona, 80% Barcelona, 20% Marseille. Nonetheless, he wants his money in full and most likely will not leave the club as a free agent or accept a letter of freedom this summer as well. We'll wait and see on Pianic, but again, there is clubs interested and he does want to go out on loan. But after preseason now the final topic that i want to discuss before i end off this video is to give you guys a contract renewal update on danny alves and sport have come out saying that danny alves continuation at barcelona next season also depends on if the club is able to sign cesar aspilicueta it is uncertain as of now so what i think is happening right now is that the club have set their standards have set their plan out for next season they want aspilicueta and des for the right back position and Danny Alves will leave. But of course, if Aspen Aquita is not signed, they will keep Danny Alves six month contract plus one, you know, six month option for the World Cup, all that crap, and keep Des as well. The question now is can they get their priority in Aspen Aquita? I think that transfer is going to be very, very difficult only for the fact that Chelsea don't want to let him leave. I think the fee will be agreed upon. Though, of course, personal terms agree with Aspen Aquita since back in January. I think the question now is will Chelsea let him go or not? If they do, he will be signed and Danny Alves will leave when his contract expires if Aspilicueta does not come in it will increase the chances of Denny Alves staying at the club but again at the moment the club are playing for next season without Denny Alves in the squad so that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed and I mean everything because of course we barely talked about anything I want to talk about Lewandowski Bernardo Silva coming in us leading the race with Kula the aspect of the alone situation and also on the exit of Mirlan Pjanic and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time on the channel take care and force a Barca, 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 Barca.